Welcome to IBM Spectrum Protect version 8.1. In this version, we've introduced new options for converting legacy data to container pools. You're now able to convert both file, VTL, and tape legacy storage pools into the new directory or cloud containers. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of using the Operations Center to convert an existing tape storage pool into a cloud container that we've created. To start the conversion, click on the tape storage pool, click on more, and then click on convert. If for some reason this was either a copy storage pool or a non-supported legacy storage pool, that convert button would be grayed out. Next, select the container you want to convert this legacy tape into. We've already created this cloud container if you have table of contents from NAS backups on that tape device, you will be asked for a new location to store those table of contents on. So we're going to select the backup pool. Now you're going to be asked to review the policies and this will show you the existing policy and the new policy you will have both for the backups, the archives, migrations, and table of contents once you convert the data out to the cloud object storage container pool. Once the conversion starts, the tape pool will be marked as read-only, so all new backups, archives, and migrations will be directed to the cloud container. Now this cloud container does have a hybrid directory associated with it, so all of these backups, archives, and migrations would be first staged in the directory space, and then as the network frees up, we push those backups across the network out to the cloud pool. We'll go ahead and click I understand the policy change. The next screen is alerting you to the fact that any data that's stored in copy storage pools or in active data storage pools will be deleted during this conversion process. This screen will actually point out any of those copy storage pools or active data pools that are associated with the specific tape storage pool we're converting. Go ahead and click I understand that those copies will be deleted and then click next. The following screen is going to prompt you to set up a schedule because this conversion process will run over multiple days most likely. The server processes field for the conversion from tape legacy pools into cloud pools dictates the number of tape drives that will be utilized. You may not want to dedicate all of your tape drives to this conversion process because other processes like Spectrum Protect database backups might need one of those tape drives. That said, if a higher priority process like a restore occurs and needs to utilize drives, the convert process will be preempted and those drives will be used for those higher priority processes. Then you're going to select a start time for the conversion process and an end time. Remember that as you're doing the conversion process over these multiple days, you will want it to be stopped when your backups kick off. This is because your backups will be going first to the directory staging area and then pushed out to the cloud. So you don't want your conversion process competing with your backup process. The minimum amount of time we recommend for the conversion process is four hours. You'll be warned if you try and schedule it for less than four hours per day. When we do the conversion of a legacy tape pool, we will select the tapes that have the most reclaimable space first. If any of the tapes required for the conversion have been checked out of the library, the standard messages will be issued into the activity log requesting the tapes be brought back on site. Okay, we've kicked off the conversion. Let's go ahead and take a look at how the conversion process appears in the Operations Center. Back on the storage pool overview, you'll see our primary storage pool that we're converting, the tape pool. We'll change the converting status, and if you hover above that, you will see the amount of data processed, as well as the target pool that we're converting to, in this case, the container cloud pool. If we drill down into the server maintenance screen, we can take a look at the schedule that was set up when we went through the wizard. 
you'll see here that the convert storage pool GVM tape schedule is currently running. Back on the storage pool page, we can drill down into the primary storage pool. That was our tape pool. You'll see the original usage in dark blue. And as we start the conversion process, you will also see a line in light blue showing how much data has been actually converted. We can drill down into the unconverted data screen. This would list data that could not be converted either because it was like an NDMP table of contents or it was damaged on the tape and we couldn't read it. Let me show you another conversion process from a, from a different server. And here's an actual list of damaged files that showed up. Once you take a look at this list of files, you as an administrator can decide if you want to try and restore that data from a copy or if you want to actually go ahead and delete those files. The screen here will list the amount of unconvertible data. And here we actually click to try and retry the conversion. This would assume that you'd done something like a repair storage pool command. You could also issue the delete command and of course it'll give you a warning before you delete off that data. And as listed here, an alternative to deletion is you could restore the data from a copy and then retry the conversion. If we take a look at this other conversion and look at the source pool, which is a tape pool, we can see that it also was converted into a container cloud pool. On the graph over here, you'll see in dark blue the original amount of data and then in light blue the amount of data that was converted. If you look below at the converted scheduled area, on Monday the conversion actually failed, but on Tuesday the schedule ran successfully. We can then take a look at the pool that we converted the data into by clicking on the container. And in this container, you'll see that on Monday, we had a certain amount of data already in the cloud, but on Tuesday after the conversion completed, we had a spike of data and a spike of activity. Let's go back to our original conversion process. You can see that we've actually converted about 27 gigabyte so far. The thing to remember about this conversion process is by going from a legacy storage pool into a container storage pool, you benefit from the inline compression and deduplication that's included as part of the container storage pools. If you hover over the percent savings, that will show you the amount of data backed up, the amount of data after deduplication, and if you optionally had compression turned on, the amount of data after compression. So in summary, the new version 8.1 of IBM Spectrum Protect offers the ability to convert legacy file, VTL, or tape storage pools into the new directory or cloud containers, thus benefiting from the space savings of the containers built in deduplication and optional compression. Thank you.